Hi, and welcome to That's Gaming DK. My name is Klaus, and in today's video we are gonna take a look at one of our most anticipated games, Monster Hunter World, the board game. So if you have followed the channel for some time, it's not a big surprise that we are very big Monster Hunter fans. When we started out the channel uh, about a year and a half back, most of our content was Monster Hunter Ultimate, Monster Hunter Rise, Monster Hunter World, etc. So we were of course more than excited when it was announced that Steamforce Games was doing a Monster Hunter board game. Now we have the possibility to actually try our early demo out on Tabletopia and we thought that would be a perfect uh, opportunity to create a how to play video that can guide you through the different rules of the game. Please be aware that this is an early, de early demo that was used during the Kickstarter campaign, so this is not the final product and the modules is not complete. So before we go to Tabletopia and get our teeth into the game, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It is highly appreciated. So here we are on Tabletopia page from Monster Hunter World, the board game. I have loaded up the engine nav uh, scenario and now we are gonna take a look at it. So first thing to do is find the game, open it up, and you will create a lobby. And now you have the possibility to add additional seed and invite players to join your game. We also need the quest book, which I will just open on a new tab, and then we are ready to go. So when everybody is in the lobby, you can just click start for starting the game. So here we are in Tabletopia, and let's just get this out of the way. So let's first go over the basic controls. So you can move around by just left clicking and dragging, or you can use the WASD buttons. When you need to zoom in and out, you can use your mouse wheel, or if you want, you can use the plus and minus keys. Other than that, you can also move around with the normal arrow keys. If you want to rotate, you can take and right click with your mouse, you can rotate, or you can pan by moving the mouse up or down. And that's about it for moving the camera. Other than that, we have how you actually interact with stuff. So to interact, you just left click and drag, and you can move stuff around, be it cards, miniatures, whatever. When you are on, let's say, a card, you can use the F key to flip it, so just mouse over it or hold it in your hand and you can flip it. You can use the T key to take it to your hand. If you pick it up with a left click and hold over until the deck below becomes orange, you can put it back in the stack. By, right, uh, by using Q and E, you can rotate 90 degrees, so if I do here, I can rotate and 90 degrees or I can use shift Q and E to rotate 45 degrees instead. To do more advanced interaction you can do right click on a component or deck or card and you will get this radial menu. This allows you to do the same stuff as we already saw but also allows you to either deal cards to all players or draw as a given number of cards as well as shuffle. So if we take a bigger deck here, 45 cards, you can see I have the possibility to draw up to 24 cards and I can do a shuffle. If for some reason you want to zoom in on a specific card because you don't want to use the mouse wheel to read it, you can mouse over it and either press C, uh, C which will go down and zoom in, or you can just hold over and click space and I will actually show you a high detail level of the component that you moused over. That is it for all the control. So let's get started. Oh, one thing I didn't say. If you have your mouse over one of the dices and you click R, you can do a row. And that was it for all the basic controls. First thing you need to do is set up the game. Luckily, this has been done for you in Sabletopia, so there's only a small couple of things that we need to do. First, each player should choose a hunter, and when they have chosen a hunter, they should go down to that hunter's play area, double click on the attack card stick, just drag it uh, around, do the same with the damage stick, and this is to ensure 
that we don't see a bug that can occur where half the deck is getting stuck under the table, preventing the player from drawing the cards. Afterwards, just give the decks a good shuffle and then take a token from this green back. That is going to be your Hunter's activation token, which is also going to give you the threat value. Other things that we need to set up is give the, the uh, elemental damage deck a shuffle. And if you are playing one or two players, also shuffle the Palico deck and draw a random Palico card for that for your Hunter. Now that we've done the setup, let's talk about the four phases of the game. The game is split into four phases. The first is the select quest phase, which is pretty easy in the demo modules. The second phase is the gathering phase, which is only available in the engine of module, which we have loaded up here. The third phase is the hunting phase, which is the phase that you play on the main board and use the miniatures. And the last phase is the return to HQ, where you hand in all the materials that you have gathered that allows you to craft new gear, which is also not part of the demo. But let's go over each of the phases specific for the Tabletopia demo modules. So the first phase is selecting a quest. So for the engine of module, what you're going to do is actually open up the associated quest book that you can download from the Tabletopia main page where it shows what to play. So I have that book here and I have gone down to the page with the different quests. The only quest that you can play in the demo module is the assigned quest. And this will give us three different information that we need to set up the rest of the game before we start the hunt. The first thing is the time limit, which tells us how many time cards should be in our time deck, which we are going to just modify in just a second. The second is the scout fly level and the assigned starting entry point. And both of these value is being used in the gathering phase before you go to the hunting phase. The last thing that we have on this page is actually how to set up the board. It shows the starting position of each hunter, as well as where to place these different special uh, environment tokens, the bushes and the ponds, as well as where the monster starts and the direction that it looks at. So let's get that set up. So we can see that the bushes and the ponds are already placed correctly. We don't need to mark the starting positions, we are going to use them later when we get to the third phase. So the only thing we need to do is move engine F down here and rotate using QE and Shift QE so it points to this corner up here. This is everything for the selecting uh, quest that we have in the quest book. So the only thing we need to do is actually modify the time day. So give the time day a good shuffle and we needed 35 cards. So we need to remove 10 cards. So I'm just going to pull out 10 cards from the top. There we go. So now we're ready to go into the second phase, which is the gathering phase, and there we need the quest book again. Be aware that if you're playing the Nergiganda module, please go directly to the third phase, which is the hunting phase. The second phase is the gathering phase, and here you need to read through the quest book and take a, a number of choices that will end up with you hopefully finding the monster. So look up the starting entry point and go to that entry in the quest book. So here we have entry point one, read out the flavor text loud, and you will either get a result that tells you what to do and where to progress to and read a new entry, or you will get a choice like here, where you as a group have to choose what to do. Please follow all the steps that you see in each of the resol uh, in the resolution that you choose or the one that is presented if there is no choice. So discarding time cards is just removing the top time card of the deck don't look at it, don't read it, just discard it. Every item that you will get would normally be used in the campaign to craft new gear, but it's not part of the demo module. And there's also a possibility to find track tokens. So when you are asked to find a track, take a track token, they are in the yellow purse up here. And what you will do is just pull it out face down. And when you find the monster, we are going to take a look at these track tokens. So when you have concluded the second phase and you have found the monster starting the hunting phase, you will go into your game again, flip all the track tokens that you found, and you're gonna uh, summarize all of these. That are, these are plus values or minus values. So here we have five. We could also have minus one, minus two, and you're gonna combine these. And then you're going back to the quest book to look up the scout level. So in the quest book, 
we had the scout fly level for our quest, saying the minimum scout fly level is 2, the maximum is 5, is 5, and we are gonna use this in the end of the quest book to look up the scout fly level for the antenna. So it says here, if you finish the adventure with fewer tracks than the minimum, which is 2, you're gonna add crushing charts to the behavior deck of the monster. If you finish between the minimum and maximum, it's deadly bludgeon. And if you finish with more tracks than the maximum, you're gonna add right flames rate. So in our example, we got five, which is uh, be uh, between the minimum and maximum. So we're gonna add the deadly bludgeon. So what that means is that we are gonna go up to the monster, find the deadly bludgeon card, add it to the monster deck, give it a shuffle, and now we're ready for the next phase, which is the hunting phase. Before the hunting phase starts, each hunter needs to place the miniatures on the board. So you already have the initial layout, you know where the monster starts and where it is uh, looking towards. So you are gonna place for what you mean is best. There's actually some additional information that you can get and use for this. And we're gonna go over them when we look into the first step of the hunting phase. So the hunting phase is split into three steps. The first step is the monster turn, the second step is the hunter turn, and the third step is checking for quest completion. So let's start with the first step. In the first step, it is the monster's turn, and the monster always start in the hunting phase. So first off, there is some information on the back on the behavior cards, and this is what you can use before you place your monsters. So this is going to show you the type of attack, so this is a wing attack, and it's going to show you what target it will find. This means nearest target, and I means the furthest target. If two targets have uh, are the same amount of nodes away, it is the hunter with the highest threat based on the threat token that we, uh, the activation token with the threat level that we gave everybody at the start of the game that determines how uh, which uh, hunter is going to be the target. But let's go over all these informations that we have here up here in the monster area. So the monster have a physiology card, which have all the information about the monster. It has the monster icon, the quest uh, level, so this is the assigned quest, the monster self 65 for the assigned quest. Then we have all the elemental resistances and immunities. Across means the monster is immune and cannot get damage from that type of elemental. One star means that it has normal um, they have no resistance, that means that every time a single token down here is placed of that type, it will take elemental damage. Two stars means it has resistance and takes two tokens before it is dealt damage. Same go for status effects, cross means immunity, one star normal, two stars resistance. This is just places to put the tokens during gameplay. Then we have the physiology of the monster. So we can see that the monster is split into different parts, we have the head, the body, the legs and the tail, and this is unique for each monster. Each body part has some information. It has an icon. It has a um, direction here telling from which direction you can attack. So the head can be attacked from the front arc of the monster, while the body can be attacked from all arcs other than the back and the tail only from the back. Then it has the defense value, which is a passive defense that you're going to subtract for all damage. And it has the number of break tokens that it takes to break that body part, along with an optional text telling how the monster changes behavior when the part is broken. So if you break the head, all fire damage attacks from the monster is minus one damage. While if you break the legs, you can remove the crush behavior from the deck, which just means that there is one less type of attack that uh, you can be hit by. All of these are the tokens that you use for elemental damage and status condition during gameplay. These are break tokens and these are broken tokens that you put on these fields when you have the accumulated number of break tokens that the physiology card tells about. These are the health and you can use your scroll wheel to put them up and down. These are the tens, these are the ones. But let's go over the monster turn. So the first thing that happens is that you flip the first card from the behavioral deck, which you already saw have these information, and then we take a look at it. There is a lot of information on these cards, and it's pretty important that you know all of it, 
but it's pretty easy when you get the hang of it. So first we have which target the monster will go by. And here we can see that it will attack the targets nearest to it. Then we have this here, which is the attack and damage. And be aware that, that this is move, this is attack and the um, order actually matters. So here it will attack first then move. Most card would have move first then attack. So if we take the attack part first, we can see that it attacks range two. That means two nodes away from the center node of the monster. It will attack in all arcs. It will do seven damage on hit. It has a dot value of five and it will also apply the stun condition. So let's go to the board and take a look. So the monster is here. It is gonna attack in all arcs. So the arcs are can be seen down here on the on this cross. So we have the front arc, the side arcs and the back arc. And this will attack all eight nodes plus the nodes next to it. So two nodes away. So all of these nodes are gonna be hit, which is just enough to none of our hunters being hit by it. If a, a, a hunter would have been hit, so let's say we were here instead, then the hunter, hunter needs to choose whether or not to take the damage or actually try to dodge. So let's go over those examples. So when the hunter has the attack cards, let's just draw five for the example, we can see that these cards actually have a value in the right top right corner known as the agility value, and this can also be used for evading. So the dodge value of this attack was 5, so our hunter would have to play the cards with agility value of 5 or higher to dodge the attack. When you dodge, you play the card face down on your stamina board, which we are going to go back to in when we go over step 2, which is the hunter's turn. So in this case, we could play this 3 and this 2 face down to dodge the attack. Also, when you dodge, you are allowed, if you successfully dodge, to move up to the number of nodes, which is equal to the total agility value that you played cards face down with. Alternatively, we could try to just take the damage. When we do, we go over our armor, and we're gonna see how much defense value we have. The shield determines your normal physical damage defense, and these here are elemental resistance, so this is lightning resistance. So our Kadashi Helm gives us no defense, only uh, resistance towards elemental damage. Our Alloy Mail gives us one defense, and our Jackrus Greaves gives us one defense and one water resistance. So we can reduce the damage by two, which would say that because we would take seven damage, we would actually only take five damage and being stunned. What stun does is actually that you need to play a card from your hand based down on the stamina board as well to show that you have spent some of your stamina being stunned. For a total list of all the conditions that the hunters can get and the monsters can get, please refer to the rulebook, which can be downloaded from the original Kickstarter page. But that was the monster's attack, so let's go to the move. The move is gonna show in what direction the mover, the target is gonna move in relation to its target. So this time the hunter is gonna move away from the hunter, one node. So we go to the board. The first thing the monster does is always uh, turn so it is looking towards its target and then it's gonna move. So we're gonna move away backward, one node, and the bushes and ponds have no effect on the monster. They have on hunters, but we'll be coming back to it. If at any point the monster can't continue to move because there's no places to move, like if it's all the way backed up here and has to move backwards or it has to move to the left in this case then it will move as far as possible and end its movement if instead we had a card that allows us to move towards a hunter we are first going to target that hunter and then when we move into the same node as a hunter the hunter needs to roll out of one of the to one of the associated nodes in the front arc. So here we can go to this, this, or this node down here. Then it moves again and can move again. If at some point the hunter can't really move out, let's say that for some reason we were attacking here, it is allowed to move to any other associate node around this. So we can go to this one, this one, or this one as the monster moves in. 
and the last one does is rotate again towards the hunter before it ends its movement. That was everything for the move. And then the last thing we have is actually the hunter activation that we need to use in the next step. And here we can see that four hunters can activate and each hunter can play one attack card each. So let's go to the board and see. Also be aware that we can see here that the next attack is going to be a wing attack. And it's going to be towards the target first away, away, furthest away. So you can use these information to find out which hunter should be where as a tactical decision. As none of the hunters have gone yet, which we can see on these tokens being green, which means that the hunter can activate, each hunt, the hunters can now discuss who should take the turn. We're playing a two player game here, and let's just also get a hand for the bow hunter. So when the hunter starts, they are drawing five cards. And let's go over what actually happens. So this is your attack deck, and this is where I pull cards from. And we already saw how the dodge value, the agility value for dodging is being used. But let's go over the rest of the values of the attack cards. First off, you have the icon for the weapon type that the card belongs to. Then you have the agility value, which can be used for dodge or sprinting, which we're going to talk about in a second. We have this bar that means that it has to be played on the stamina bar of stamina board, which we have here, which have limited number of spaces, which is very important. And then we have a range value and a damage value. So this shot here can be used to attack in a range two, so two nodes away, and it will deal one damage card of damage. Other types of uh, cards could be the charge sidestep, which is gonna allow you to move one in any direction. That's what I mean when it stands in the middle. And it has a special flavor text saying that you draw one additional damage card when next attack they will play uh, this turn, which inflicts damage. So if we are if we were allowed to play two damage cards, we could do a combo with charge sidestep and shot to do two damage cards and do a free move. Other cards don't have a stamina line. And that means that they are just played and discarded directly to get the effect. So if we go down here and take a, a look at our Dual Blade Hunter, we can see that we also have symbols for break tokens, which are break tokens that you can add to the part of the monster that you are attacking. We have Elemental Damage Token. Last type of symbol that we can have is this one here, which just means that this number of cards already needs to be at least this number of cards needs to be played on the stamina board already so this require you to already have one card on the stamina board before you can use it also be aware that when the line finishes off like this it means it is a finisher move and you're not allowed to play any more damage cards after this one so even if you could play three card and you played this as number one or two your turn would end when it comes to playing attack cards also be aware that some of your gear can have special abilities like the Kadashi Helm, which allows you one request to when you actually dodge a monster to, to discard the attack cards you placed uh, you played instead of having them and blocking on the stamina ball. But let's say that this is how it looks and let's start with our bow hunter because the bow hunter is within range two, one, two nodes, and we can see that we can play a shot in range two. So to play attack card, you place it in the leftmost slot on your stamina board, and then you do what it says. So this is attack range two. We're gonna see what arc we are in, and we are in the back arc, which means when we go to the hunter card, that we can only attack the tail. So the tail has a defense value of one, which we need to subtract from the damage we do. So let's pull a damage card for our attack, which is two damage reduced by one, and that means that the monster takes one damage. Be aware that if the defense would reduce the damage below one, it is still a one that it, which means they can never be reduced below one. They will always do one point of damage. So every time a hunter have taken their turn, played it up to the maximum number of cards that they could play based on the behavior card, uh, behavior deck card from the monster, they're gonna pull out the top time card. But this time, differently from when you did play the gathering phase, you're just gonna read it out loud so this is a tactical shift and do what it says so flip your hunter token face down 
this card one attack card from the rise from slot of your stamina board and that is the only way other than by preparation which we're going to go over in a minute where you can clear your stamina board discard any number of attacks cards from your hand and draw up to five cards and then we have an additional effect that says up to two hunters may move one node each so we are gonna flip our token which means that we can't go again before everybody else have gone as well we are gonna discard our rightmost card and I think we're gonna keep what we have and just pull another card up then the next hunter can go because four hunters could actuate as we're only two hunters that is gonna be our dual blade hunter and also we could move one step so we know that the monster is gonna attack the one furthest away so let's get a bit closer just to ensure no let's just go down here and our dual blade hunter wants to move as well so now it is our dual blade hunter's turn and let's go over another rule which is actually movement on a hunter's turn they have what is called a walk which is a free one node movement that they can take to get closer or further away or whatever they want they also have the possibility to sprint which is done by playing an attack card for the agility value allowing you to sprint that many uh, nodes so playing this will give us face down is gonna let us allow to sprint too if at any time a hunter enters a pond that is gonna um, remove sharpness from the weapon so the hunter needs to discard the top card of the damage deck without getting the damage if a hunter ends the movement in a bush they're gonna get their threat reduced with minus four and you can use this to actually better determine which hunter is gonna be attacked by the monster the next turn but as we have a free walk and a tactical shift we are just gonna go here anyway we only allow to play one attack card so let's play our shocking rush that is two damage we can move one field afterwards we do one lightning damage plus an additional one if it's the first card uh, attack card you played this turn which it is so we are in the front arc so we're attacking the head or the body so let's go up and check i think we're gonna try and break the body so that is two damage cards the head has defense two so three plus a one that's four minus two that's two damage to the monster and then we also did two lightning damage so we're gonna place one lightning damage and we can see it has resistance so that does nothing but when we add the second one <clears throat> it would trigger which means that if we do elemental damage so go down find the elemental damage deck take the top card and that is damage dealt directly to a monster that ignores all defense so another two damage dealt then our hunter has taken his turn so he will draw the top card of the time deck which is a threat shift <clears throat> so flip your hunter token discard one card from the board discard a number of cards in your hand draw up to five and all players pass their hunter token to the player to the left that means and you should of course still so if it's flipped it should flip back so when a hunter flip a token and all tokens are flipped all flip them back to active then we do the threat shift and now we still have two activations so because both hunters are active our uh, dual hunter could go again or the bow hunter could go first and then the dual hunter again so a couple of more things to go over first of all we have the palicos the palico is a special action that you can use once per hunt so here we have the wrap up meow which allows us to say if the hunters win three nodes of your hunter you can draw three damage cards as if you result of attack this doesn't count towards your attack deck but it is a one time use <clears throat> also when your damage deck is depleted you can no longer deal damage which means your weapon has gone blunt and all your attacks are gonna do zero damage to get your damage deck back you need to sharpen your weapon and that is done by taking a preparation action instead of an attack so when you do a preparation action you are allowed to do a couple of things first of all you can still walk you have one free walk you can still sprint by playing a card face down you can drink a potion which we're gonna go over in a second and then you can sharpen your weapon which means that you just take all your attack cards make a new stack and shuffle and then you're ready again so when you drink a potion 
you will heal up to full health and the health of the hunters is here so you can use the mouse wheel to scroll up and down you will heal up to max health which is um, eight and then you will clear your stamina board and you're ready to go again the last thing that we need to talk about is fainting so if you at any time a hunter is reduced to zero health they will faint and when the hunter faints their miniature is removed from the board and you just discard two time cards without reading them that is the time that it takes for a hunter to be carded and get back into the fight you also clear your stamina board and get back to full health when you have fainted you only have three things so on the third phase you fail the mission and you can also fail the mission if you run out of time cards when it becomes that hunter's turn again the hunter chooses where to place the hunter on one of the four starting locations uh, located on the board shown in the quest book and they continue as usual if at any time you do an attack that actually adds break token you will just add one of these crosses here and when you hit the amount of break tokens needed for that part you're gonna replace them with a actually broken token and then the new status of uh, this text here for the broken uh, part is gonna be in effect for the rest of the game if at any time you reduce the monster to zero health you have one and you're going to the last phase so the last phase of the game is the return to HQ where you actually get your rewards. So the way this works is that you actually flip this card here and you will roll the dice to find out what you have actually found. Again, in the demo you can't really use these things to anything because we don't have the possibility to craft new weapons. So it doesn't really matter in this demo module. But that was everything for how to play the demo module in tabletopia so there we are that was all the rules and our explanation of how to play both phases of the game we are really looking forward to this game hits the market later this year hopefully or uh, early next year but this is a really good opportunity to try it out and we hope that this was a helpful video so you can start playing and trying out the game yourself we also hope that some of the experience we have with Tabletopia and some of the tips and tricks can help you get a more smooth gameplay when you try it out yourself. As always, if you have any comments, please write them in the comment section below or go join our Discord where you can ask questions or just join the conversation in general. That was all for today's video. Thanks for watching.